Eight days, 45 days, nearly two months, Starliner still hasn't returned. It encountered a series of technical issues that even industry experts seem unsure how to resolve. No one knows how to get the astronauts back. Finally, NASA realized they really needed a backup plan to rescue their astronauts. That's when SpaceX's Dragon is considered a life belt. So what led NASA to this aggressive decision? And how will Dragon rescue the astronauts who flew on Starliner? Let's find out on today's episode. NASA and Boeing have planned to use the Starliner spacecraft to regularly transport astronauts to and from the International Space Station, ISS, as a second vehicle. However, before they can commence commercial flights, they must conduct numerous test flights to ensure absolute safety. That's why the Starliner's first crew flight test is crucial. In the field of space travel, where technical issues and even serious accidents can pose life-threatening risks, this step is indispensable. Ironically, the Starliner seems to be following a problematic path. A series of technical issues have emerged, causing the Starliner and its crew's stay at the ISS to extend longer and longer. To date, it's been nearly two months. So when will the Starliner and its astronauts return? Not a single soul out there knows the answer. The silence from Boeing and NASA subtly hints at their uncertainty about the Starliner's reliability. In the aerospace industry, what isn't said often matters as much as what is publicly announced. Therefore, you have to pay attention to what NASA isn't saying. Behind closed doors, there are likely some really unpleasant conversations happening. On July 15th, NASA awarded SpaceX $266,678 under the commercial crew contract for a special study for emergency response. This move clearly shows just how deeply worried they are. Although the information released is very limited, it seems NASA is looking to determine how quickly they can launch a Crew Dragon spacecraft in an emergency. The $266,678 grant to SpaceX can be interpreted as a request. If we need to get our astronauts off the ISS as soon as possible, how quickly can you prepare and launch an empty Crew Dragon? That's $266,678 to find out the answer. The details are kept really tight, but it will be crucial to see what the study reveals. Can SpaceX make quick modifications to any Dragon Falcon 9 boosters that are in the final stages of refurbishment? Could they convert a planned mission into this emergency one? These are really tough questions. However, the biggest issue here is the cost. Keeping a Falcon 9 and Crew Dragon system on standby for quick launch is extremely expensive. First, they need a dedicated launch pad. Reserving a pad for emergency missions means missing out on other commercial launch opportunities, leading to significant revenue loss. Second, there's the issue of on-hand fuel. Maintaining a large amount of special fuel ready to go is not only extremely costly, but also requires stringent safety and storage measures. Next, they need to cover personnel costs. The team of technicians and senior specialists needs to be on standby 24 to 7. Moreover, the spacecraft and boosters need regular maintenance to stay launch ready, creating massive maintenance expenses. And finally, astronauts and ground crew need continuous training for this emergency scenario, adding to substantial training costs. With all these factors, plus the preparation of two spacesuits, if a rescue Dragon flight gets the green light, its cost will far exceed that of a regular one. This could be a lucrative contract for SpaceX, but who will foot the bill for this flight? NASA? No, it looks like it will be Boeing. According to the agreement, Boeing needs to transport two astronauts up and back. Clearly, Boeing is struggling to fulfill its mandated responsibilities. In reality, there's a more cost-effective option. Instead of organizing a separate Dragon flight just to bring the two astronauts back, SpaceX might be exploring exploring the possibility of combining this with a routine mission. This idea not only saves significantly on costs, but also efficiently utilizes existing resources. Specifically, NASA may have provided funds to SpaceX to consider whether it's possible to bring these two astronauts back alongside a regular full crew. The Dragon spacecraft can carry up to seven passengers, so adding two more to an already scheduled flight is entirely feasible. Conveniently, the timing is perfect for this approach. The Crew-9 mission to the International Space Station is scheduled for the latter half of August. This mission was initially planned to carry four astronauts. If adjusted, the Crew-9 Dragon could also bring along two spacesuits for Butch and Sunni. Moreover, the Crew-8 spacecraft is still docked at the ISS. This creates another option. Butch and Sunni could return on the Crew-8 Dragon if necessary. I believe Boeing and NASA are still working together to finalize their plan, but I bet they'll ultimately have to rely on SpaceX to bring the astronauts back. Why? Just look at what Boeing has been doing while the Starliner has been docked at the ISS. Boeing and NASA are working to demonstrate their commitment by testing the essential systems for extended Starliner missions. So, what exactly are they planning to tackle here? It all started with a helium leak detected before launch, which was ultimately deemed a minor issue that wouldn't jeopardize the mission's overall success. Although the engineers knew the leak was manageable, things took another turn when four additional helium leaks popped up as the spacecraft docked with the ISS on June 6th. 
While concerning, these weren't necessarily game changers, but here's where things got really critical. Five out of the 28 thruster valve used for Starliner's reaction control system, which is crucial for maneuvering the spacecraft, malfunctioned. This meant the spacecraft couldn't dock with the ISS until ground engineers figured out how to navigate the spacecraft safely. This issue wasn't just a hiccup. It was a fundamental problem that could have put the whole mission in jeopardy. Ground teams planned to fire all 28 RCS thrusters after undocking to collect additional data signatures on the service module thrusters before the hardware is expended, NASA officials wrote in the CFT update on 10th June. As part of normal operations, the service module separates from the crew module on return, so NASA and Boeing seem to try to gather as much data as possible to aid in system assessments. I did listen to NASA's Boeing Crew Flight Test Status News Conference on July 25, 2024. Boeing is getting closer to understanding the root causes of two major issues, the thrusters' performance degradation and helium leaks, thanks to a test sample that's been at White Sands for three years. Well, I've always wondered why such basic issues like valve leaks keep cropping up on the Starliner. This spacecraft is supposed to undergo rigorous pre-flight testing simulating its entire mission. The press conference gave me the answer. Their testing process is seriously flawed. First, Boeing didn't test the available test articles. If they had tested before the flight, they might have detected the potential problems with leaks. It was only after the Starliner encountered real-world issues that they went back to test. The second, the even more serious mistake, involves the lack of integrated testing testing. Boeing went ahead with the flight without conducting any integrated tests on all the thrusters in the same doghouse, as they call it. They have eight thrusters in a sealed compartment with thermal protection, but this setup was never actually tested. When questioned about this in the press conference, the Boeing representative explained that having multiple thrusters in one compartment meant their temperatures would affect each other, and combined with sunlight, it made ground testing impossible. They argued that these conditions could only be simulated, not practically tested on the ground. However, this excuse use from Boeing was contradicted by their own recent actions. They conducted a simulated test with just one thruster and observed the same performance degradation as seen on Starliner during the CFT-1 flight. This demonstrates that ground testing is indeed possible, but they simply just didn't do it. This is a significant lapse in their quality assurance process, showing a lack of diligence and adherence to fundamental aerospace industry principles. In summary, Boeing did not conduct comprehensive end-to-end -end testing for the Starliner system. Instead, they broke down the tests into smaller segments and tested each part individually through simulations using models. They might understand the cause of the issues happening in Starliner CFT-1, but fixing them? That's a completely different story. Boeing's technical capabilities seem to have truly collapsed, and if a rescue flight from SpaceX is approved, it will be a devastating blow to Boeing's reputation and mark an undeniable defeat to its rival, SpaceX, in the field of astronaut transportation. This mission could very well be the final nail in the coffin for the Starliner program, a project that has been a heavy financial burden for Boeing since its inception in 2016. The $1.6 billion in losses is not just a financial strain, a testament to Boeing's failure in project management and risk assessment. Notably, Boeing still has to complete six missions to the International Space Station under its contract with NASA. This puts Boeing in a very precarious position, forcing them to make some of the toughest decisions. In this dire situation, Boeing faces two unappealing choices. The first option is to withdraw from the contract and accept the penalties. This could help Boeing cut its losses and avoid future risks, but it would also mean paying substantial fines and losing the chance to assert its standing in the aerospace industry. The second option is to continue the project until the completion of the missions NASA has purchased. While this could allow Boeing to fulfill its commitments and potentially improve the performance of the Starliner, it also means the company must continue to face significant financial and technical risks. Each unsuccessful launch or issue could lead to further financial and reputational damage for Boeing. The Starliner CFT-1 has provided Boeing with a valuable learning experience, and I sincerely hope they can take something away from it and make the necessary aggressive changes to reclaim their former glory. All right, that's it for today. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more in-depth looks at the latest advancements in space technology. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.